The wait is almost over. Toyota has just teased the Land Cruiser revival back here in the United States. Let's get into it. <laughs> And smash the heck out of that like button for the Land Cruiser coming back to America. Legend Reborn all-new Toyota Rugged SUV is on the horizon. Check this out. We have the FJ40 over here on the left. On the right, we have the new Land Cruiser. And if we look at this pretty closely, it doesn't look that much different from the side as the all-new Lexus GX. The Lexus GX has always been a modified Land Cruiser Prado, which is a little bit smaller than the full-size 300 series, which we didn't get. It was discontinued after the 200 series, but this is just a little bit smaller. But what, what Toyota's actually done with the Lexus GX, aka the, the fancy Prado, is that they made it bigger. It now shares the same wheelbase. So what we're looking at here is essentially just a modified 300 series. It shares the same platform, twin turbo V6, so at least on the Lexus. What we'll see here could be turbo four-cylinder hybrid with 326 horsepower and 465 pound-feet of torque, if I remember right. That's uh, the powertrain that's in the Tacoma with the eight-speed auto so we should be getting something like that here don't know about the twin turbo v6 they might save that for the lexus gx so with 65 years of heritage you can choose to slow down or reinvent yourself we choose the latter stay tuned for more updates they also have a couple of teaser images here so what i did is downloaded them and we're going to take a peek at them as well as brighten up the image for you guys we're overlooking the american southwest here and obviously the the old school the og land cruiser the fj40 but let's go ahead and brighten the image up just a little bit and we get some details coming through on the headlights check this out now, it's hard to say exactly what's going on, but this almost looks like the blockier headlights that we saw on the Best Car Web Magazine render. I'll go ahead and put that on the screen for you guys. So it looks like it's one of the better looking renders from Best Car, but stay tuned. Obviously, we can't see a whole lot from the side profile, but it looks like a pretty chunky front bumper as well. And the hood might not be quite as aggressive as we see in the Lexus GX, but it's hard to say here looking at it from the side. Also behind the B pillar here, we have that aggressive window line that cuts up just like we have in uh, the new Lexus GX as well. Looks like you can see the exhaust tip sticking back here with some mud flaps. You got a bumper, obviously, you know, pretty vertical tail lights here, which doesn't come as a surprise. The, the current Prado has pretty vertical tail lights as well as the, the current GX. Looking at the second image here, we might actually have a slightly better look here at the front bumper, maybe some integrated skid plate here at the bottom. So as we overlay the official teaser here compared to best cars renderings of the new Prado, AKA Land Cruiser, that's just, they'll just call it Land Cruiser here in the United States, they won't call it Prado. Prado is mostly used probably in uh, Australia as well as South Africa would be my guess. But in, in Europe where they get the, the Prado, they just call it Land Cruiser. As well as the Middle East, I'm sure they call it Prado as well. All right, let's look at the front end here and compare it to what we have going on here. It doesn't look like we're getting the circular headlines. That could be an option for other markets, but it could also be an option for um, a, a, I'm not gonna say TRD, but it would be like a GR Sport model. I guess maybe for America, they could do the TRD if they wanted to, since it, I'm getting blinded, hold on. Since TRD has such a big naming here, so maybe they do that instead of GR Sport. And then for other markets, they could have GR Sport. But I think that the circular headlights don't completely write them off yet. Now, these rectangular headlights look almost like gospel at this point, especially what we see going on here. I mean, this front bumper, they seem to be pretty confident on this front bumper sort of blocky design. And what's interesting from this 2D side image is that we see a, a large vertical piece running. And we have a similar large vertical piece running on these renders as well. And the size of the grill doesn't look like to be the larger one down here. It looks like one of the more compact grills that you see with these top two renders because this area around the Toyota logo looks pretty small, at least vertically. Um, horizontally, it's gonna be, you know, right between the headlights and the bigger portion is going to be underneath the Toyota logo right here. Now, the skid plate, the skid plate looking thing at the bottom looks more akin to what we see at the very bottom here. So if we put this silver portion with this kind of built-in skid plate looking thing down here and we put it on this one, that's probably, and I could just easily Photoshop that, that's probably the most accurate render we have so far of the upcoming Prado. And why should we trust Best Car Web? Well, they 100% got the Prius, right? They got the GR Corolla like 
99% right. They were really close with the crown as well. So they know what it's almost like Toyota's given them a sneak peek behind closed doors. They can't take their cameras or phones and they, they can almost, then they probably can't take any sketches either. Maybe they, they take a little memory photograph and do their best to come up with the renders back at the studio. So this is probably the most accurate one if we blend these two together here at the bottom. But we can hold out for these circular headlights as well, maybe on a GR Sport aka TRD model. But I hope you have your snacks and drinks because the first half of 2023 is in the books. That means sales numbers are finally here for the Japanese, Korean, all the, all the domestic automakers as well. Most of the uh, European automakers are coming in. But since we're talking about Toyota today, look at that. Look how good this RX 500H looks in black. It hides the overly aggressive front end styling and front bumper styling. But anyways, it looks fantastic in black. So what we have here are the first half sales of Toyota. And let's get into it. Make sure you have your snacks and drinks. And we got a long road ahead. So in the first half, Toyota sold about 270,000 electrified vehicles. That's ranging from a Corolla hybrid all the way to the fuel cell Mirai with the PZ4X battery electric vehicle as well. So it's now up to 26% of their total sales volume. By the end of this decade, Toyota plans on their global volume to be about 35% battery electric not just hybrid. So, I mean, by the end of this decade, we're looking probably like 75% electrified, something like that here in the United States with hybrids being a big part of it. All right, Toyota and Lexus bringing more electrified options, powertrain options to their lineup. That's all they said. It's almost like a teaser. So, I mean, this is this announcement was like a day before the Land Cruiser. So maybe that they're hinting at the Land Cruiser coming to the market. We also can get our hopes up for uh, the Crown Sport which is rumored to uh, come alongside of this funky crown that we have right now. They say they have 24 electrified Toyota and Lexus vehicle options available at dealerships, the most among any automaker. And it's true, Toyota has just, they, they can attack nearly every single segment with the sheer volume of models that they have. And then when you just slap a hybrid on those models, you magically are the most electrified automaker in the world. But the thing is, just because you have more models doesn't mean you're, you're selling more electrified vehicles. I mean, Tesla's selling over a million BEVs per year at this point. Toyota sold last year about 20,000, but things are changing. We'll go over the BZ4X sales uh, here in the United States this year as well. All right, so they're up 15% in June, Toyota, compared to June of 2022. For the first half of 2023, Toyota in the U.S. sold over a million vehicles. It's actually down 0.7%, or you can just say it's a wash. It's a wash compared to last year. But since June was up 15%, things are going to get better and better and better as the year progresses for availability. So, I mean, as you know, it's this is the big selling time, summer as we go into fall, right before, you know, November, December. This is the big time for the automakers to sell. Um, and spring is typically the dead time, as I remember those tough days uh, as a salesman. If we take out Lexus, Toyota was down about 3% on the first half of the year. But if you add Lexus in, in the equation, which was up 18% on the month of May, for the first half, they're up about 14%. So Lexus is looking to have some more regularity with your inventory, it looks like, especially when it comes to hybrids. Highlights to me, there are so many, it's a little overload, but I just want to gloss over best ever June sales. Of course, the BZ4X, like it really wasn't on sale too much in volume. I mean, also they had the recall last year. Uh, with the wheels falling off. So of course it's gonna have its best ever June sales. A Corolla Cross Hybrid, this is its first June ever on the market. So that's a thing. It's good to see the Corolla Hybrid having the best uh, June ever as well because we need affordable hybrids around 22 to $25,000. It is a bargain king. There's no other vehicle on the market. Maybe the Elantra Hybrid um, that can come close to the cost of ownership and fueling. Grand Highlander and its hybrid models, well, go figure. It's the first June ever that they're on sale. Sequoia and Tundra finally getting some volume, having a good month of June. So best first half sales. Well, the BZ4X, this is the first time it's ever been on sale for the first full half of the year. Almost same thing for the Corolla Cross, but they're just able to scale up volume a little bit better at the Alabama plant. GR Corolla, well, this is the first full half that I'm aware of that's been on sale. Corolla Hybrid, continuing their Mirai, whatever, fuel cell. 
plug-in prime RAV4 first half. So that's great to see volume increasing on the prime. It's still nowhere near it needs to be, as we'll talk about in a little bit. And then the truck's getting uh, their fair share. I got to take off the headphones. It's, it's getting a little hot and sweaty in here. I'm pretty excited. So Lexus... So their hybrids are coming in finally in full force here. Maybe not full force, but in, in volume that they absolutely need. So their electrified June sales are up 84%. That is insane. The first half electrified sales up to about 67, 68%. And their electrified options now can account for nearly 30% of their total volume. Let's look at the big numbers here. NX sales up 85% in June. Remember, they're switching over from the previous model to the newer model early last year. So that's where we're seeing, why we're seeing such a huge improvement here as the microchip shortage and other shortages resolve themselves. Lexus Alex is actually up. If you want to drop $100,000 on a truck, that's going to be uh, not as good as the upcoming GX550, in my opinion, in a lot of different ways. But there you go. UX hybrid, well, it's only hybrid now. Previously, they had the front wheel drive model. So the sales are up quite a bit in June for the hybrid model. And for the first half, it's it's doubled, but that makes sense because they're no longer featuring the front wheel drive naturally aspirated 169 horsepower model. NX hybrid sales up in June, 123%, up about 50% on the year. This is the best version of the NX. Yes, Objectively speaking, the plug-in hybrid, the 450H Plus is better, but it costs more. It's really hard to find. Um, and this is, you know, with when you're getting 40 miles per gallon in an NX and it's super smooth, like I would be super happy with an NX hybrid if I can't get my hands on a readily available plug-in hybrid. And this powertrain is probably the best. It's better than the 350 Turbo that I have in my driveway for review this week. And I actually picked the Aria in my comparison test against it. Um, which is apples to oranges, but watch that if you're interested. And it's way better than the 250 um, naturally aspirated four cylinder. Anyways, NX plug-in hybrid sales are up as well. We saw the RAV4 Prime having a best first half as well. So no surprise there. It's the same powertrain. Best ever June sales. Well, IS500, it's kind of, I mean, it's only had a couple Junes on sale. NX hybrid, great to see. Total NX, that's impressive. Best ever June sales for the NX. I think if the NX was more widely available, I think it could actually sell the RX. The RX is just so big. And the NX is what the RX used to be in size. The first generation RX 300. And maybe the second generation a little bit. The 330 and the 350 of the second gen. It's just that the NX is that size of vehicle, which is far more easy to drive in, in, in spaces. And, and the NX has gotten a little bit bigger compared to the first gen NX. And it's more usable in the back row. has more cargo space. So I, I love the NX. It's probably my favorite uh, Lexus crossover. RX Hybrid also getting in on the action for best ever June as they now have more hybrid options. They have the 500H, they have the 350. Still, it's crickets on the 450H plus RX plug-in hybrid, but it's supposed to be coming. All right, let's get into the full sales and uh, just go ham. If you need a potty break, go ahead and press pause and or you can just take your phone to the potty with you and let, let's get into the sales here. Well, the Corolla is up on the month of June 4%, but it's down on the year. So the Corolla hybrid seems to be doing well, but overall the Corolla itself is not uh, in the best of places here. So it's down about 17% on the year. Supra, whatever, it's niche car. Make sure to watch my walk around of uh, the 40, was it 45th, 40th and 45th anniversary, uh, a tribute to the Mark IV Supra. Check that out. Anyways, that is this year's special edition of the Supra with the Mekon Blast orange paint color. GR86, watch my Trino video of uh, the walk around, the reprise of the Trino trim, which is pretty neat. Uh, it's down about 10% of the month, but it's down even more, 15% on the year. All right. Toyota Mirai, uh, it's having a good year so far, but it's only for California, essentially. Avalon, rest in peace. Prius, this is a shot to the gut. So I am still planning to buy a Prius Prime if it if I can get my hands on one, as soon as I can get my hands on one. Um, and this is, includes a Prius Prime sales, but we'll go to Prius Prime sales here in a little bit. But check this out. It is up massively, the Prius, compared to last June, up 26%. But it's down 20%, 26% when you look at the whole year. So Prius volume finally starting to ramp up for a strong finish to the year. But it's been a struggle for the first half of this year if you've been wanting to get your hands on a Prius. Uh, yeah. Anyways, who would have thought that the Prius would be as desirable as it is now? All right. Camry. 
kicking butt. It's up 11% on the years. We get ready for the redesign. It's supposed to be coming in or at least be announced by the end of this year. So stay tuned. I'll bring it to you guys in the flash. But the Camry up 24% on the month of June. Great to see the Camry. Long live the sedans. And let's get into the Lexus sedans. IS up about 2% on the year, but it's down about 8% on the month. So not heading in the right direction. RC it's only a matter of time before they kill this vehicle and replace it. It's hard to say when they'll replace it because uh, the LFR, it's not really a direct replacement for it. It's its direct replacement for it as a GT3 race car, but it's going to cost like 200, 150 to 200 grand would be my guess. It's kind of the spiritual successor to the LFA in terms of just raw performance, not the V10. But anyways, the Lexus ES uh, volume down for the month of uh, June, 6% and down 12% overall. We're waiting for that redesign in the next couple of years as production will head back uh, to Japan from Kentucky. Lexus LS, well, the rumors are that, the, that Lexus is going to kill the LS, which is hard to believe as that, that that's what made the brand successful since 1989 and its early years, just beating out the Germans. But we'll see because it's it's a shadow of its former self right now. And the sales are indicative of that. And the production is probably indicative of that too. LC, my, one of my favorite layouts. All, well, objectively, the LC is the best Lexus. One of the best Lexus has ever made outside of the LFA. Um, and volume is about flat on the year. It seems like they're pretty much at capacity um, or close to. They can only make so many out of that Motomachi plant, only making a little over 100 per month, it looks like. They sold 132 last month. But... It's tough because I want to buy one of these in the future on the used market, but since they hardly make any of them, they hold their value insanely well. And it doesn't help that it's a Lexus. So Lexus inherently hold their value pretty well for a luxury automaker. CHR rest in peace. So we're going back to Toyota crossover. CHR rest in peace in America. Uh, watch my review on the redesign of the CHR coming for Europe and maybe other parts. I think Australia is getting it, maybe Japan. But anyways, BZ4X. Check this out. Look at the volume that they're selling on this thing. Probably not because they want to, probably because they have to, um, as it's a, you know, it's not a very competitive battery electric vehicle. Toyota's not happy with it. Um, and yes, it's it's almost a good thing because Toyota saw how bad the BZ4X is compared to the competition. It's a good car. It's just not a good electric car because it's limitations in the charging and range. But anyways, it's a great city car. I'd still take a Nissan Aria over if you wanted to buy a Japanese electric vehicle, but even the Aria is not the best EV out there for the price. But anyways, BZ4X selling at insane volume compared to last year. 3,600 units sold so far this year, and they sold 616 in the month of June. Only way I'd buy a BZ4X it would be if I could get it for maybe $40,000, maybe. Uh, it'd have to be heavily discounted. There's no um, uh, tax rebate on it unless you lease it. So maybe if you lease it and get a good deal, buying it would be tough because Lexus and Toyota in three years will have an all new platform that is going to make this seem like 20 years archaic. So maybe leasing the BZ4X is the best way to do it so you can get that EV tax credit. All right, round four. Well, up 15% on the month of June. That's great to see that volume returns. They're cash cow, their number one volume seller, selling at 200,000 vehicles, which is, you know, compared to the Camry, for example, is about um, 150,000. So actually, they're down. They haven't sold 200,000 units this year because they're down. They're down 7%. They sold 187,000. So it's not interesting how close the Camry is getting to the round four in terms of volume. Hell yeah, go Camry. All right, Corolla Cross. Well, it's a brand new vehicle as in the past couple of years. Um, and then now they have the hybrid, which is going to crush everyone in the segment with that 40 miles per gallon, 200 horsepower. It is unbeatable as of right now, in my opinion, the Corolla Cross hybrid. But anyways, Corolla Cross up 21% on the month and 27% on the year. That's great. It's very affordable. Um, I don't really recommend the CVT non-hybrid on it because it made my car, my kid's car sick. Uh, it's just really hard to maintain speed with that CVT engine configuration for whatever reason. But anyways, the Venza down 10%, down 30%. And I don't know what they're going to do with the Venza. If they introduce the Corolla, sorry, if they introduce the crown sport into the United States, I mean, that's kind of the same segment. The Venza is, I know the Venza is more of a laid back luxury Harrier, uh, but it's almost like a direct competitor to the Lexus NX in a lot of ways, the Venza because it is hybrid only. So, I mean, the Venza is, is 
uh, a Lex. It's like Lex is actually might be better in Lex's build quality in some ways. It's built in Japan. So anyways, I'm maybe I, I sh maybe I'll just zip it there. But the Venza is an amazing vehicle. I really like the Venza. XLE is the way to go. And yes, anyways, it's down 30% on the year. I don't want the Venza to go, but if it gets replaced by the Crown Sport, I would be actually pretty happy. And I wouldn't be happy about it, but that's a trade I would be willing to take. Okay, to the Highlander, up 16% on the month, down 3.5% on the year. But the thing is, the Grand Highlander's volume will go down as the Grand Highlander is introduced in the market. So they sold 159 Grand, Highland Grand Highlanders last month in the month of June, which is, you know, it's the first month. So there you go. Forerunner up 23% on the month of June, down 24%. So they've essentially just made back their normal volume. It seems like that what they're used to in the month of June. So uh, that'll be good ish. If you, I mean, check out my review on my, was it the 40th anniversary edition of the Forerunner that I reviewed? Love the Forerunner. It's built from granite. Feels great when you drive it. Super solid vehicle. Uh, Sequoia. It's up 8,000% because they sold 19 last year in the month of June, but they sold 1,600. Remember, it's iForce Max only, so it's a hybrid twin turbo V6, and they've sold about 10,000 this year, almost 10,000 this year, compared to about 500 last year. So Koya getting some attention. They actually sold a Land Cruiser. How fitting is we started this video talking about Land Cruiser. They sold a Land Cruiser, a 200 series, for the month of June, and they've sold four so far this year and last year they only sold 39 uh, 39 so whatever sienna okay this is good to see because the sienna volume has been really low it's been hard to get watch my review i got 37 miles per gallon driving over 70 miles an hour with a family loaded into it across alligator alley and back like it's absolutely insane how efficient the Sienna is a little bit loud on the highway because of the wind noise, but the Sienna up 34% on the month of June. That's great to see my, one of my favorite vehicles. Uh, maybe I'm biased cause I've had two Siennas. I don't have the hybrid Sienna, but, uh, yeah, I think my mine will live, live on for a long time. It's only got 40,000 miles. So, all right, Tacoma, uh, well, it's kind of flatlined. It's actually up on a little, about 8% on the year, but it's flatlined for the month as we get ready for the new generation. Uh, which when that happens, guys, it seems like every time we get a new model introduced, volume will drop off for maybe a half year or maybe a full year until they can get back to the full volume sales of this current generation, or should I say the previous generation Tacoma. So if you want the V6, get it while you can essentially, because it's all turbo four cylinders now going forward or hybrid turbo four cylinders. All right, Tundra doing really well this year, up 35%, up about 37, 38% on uh, the month. All right, let's get into the Lexus crossovers here. The UX up about 15%. Well, the fact that it's hybrid only now makes it a much better buy, in my opinion, starting off. So I think that's gonna help with um, interest, but also volume compared to last year, it's up 86% on the month of June. So that's great to see. NX, it's getting close to those RX numbers. NX at nearly 7,000 units, RX at almost 10,000 units. If we look at the full year though, the NX up seven, nearly 75%. So that's great to see, as I mentioned before, my affinity for the NX. Uh, the RX up 11% with the new redesign for the month of June. It's up 7%. So the RX is one of those vehicles that even though it got a redesign, it's kind of bucked the trend of volume going down. The opposite has happened. Volume has gone up. Now, part of that could be is a ride on the coattails of the microchip shortage that being resolved. And that could be helping here the new generation of the RX quite mightily. All right. Lexus GX down 7% on the month, down 4.5% for the year as we get ready for the new model that will be coming January, February, somewhere around there. Uh, Lexus LX, we mentioned, is actually up on the year. They've sold about 3,500 of them. But just look at the GX volume. It's so impressive. 13,000 units for the old V8 powered body on frame beast. Now, I said we would get into hybrids, right? So if we look at the, the their electrifying models so far this year, their total sales volume is only up 1.4%. Toyota's though is down 5% while Lexus's has soared to 67%. So, you know, a little bit of my theory is that Toyota is apportioning these hybrid powertrains for the Lexus models first 
since they are restrained on batteries or whatever the limitations are for these hybrids, probably the batteries more than likely. And they're apportioning those for the Lexus volume for the higher profit vehicles. Makes sense to me. I would do the same thing if I was in Toyota's shoes. So, but overall, it's just 1% better for electrified vehicles compared to last year. But the month of June is looking better, right? Things are ramping up. It's up 29% for electrified models when you include Toyota and Lexus combined. So the restraints or the restrictions and limitations of supply for hybrids seems to be resolving itself slowly but surely. All right, this is where it hurts me because I'm waiting for my Prius Prime. Prius Hybrid, it's up 32% on the month of June, but it's down 17% on the year. So this first half of 2023, if you're waiting for the redesigned Prius, it's been a grind even more so for the Prius Prime. So the Prius Prime finally for the month of June saw an improvement in volume and availability compared to last June, but look where it's at on the year so far. It's half of what it was in availability. And that's a tough pill to swallow because the Prius Prime is more desirable by far than it ever has been before. Corolla Hybrid, very affordable uh, and up 44%, kicking butt, taking names. This is the way I, I recommend probably most people go for the Corolla Hybrid over the Prius Hybrid if thriftiness is your main goal here. No, it's not as efficient, but it comes in at such a low price point that it beats the Prius in cost of ownership. Unless you're driving like incredible amounts of miles, um, the Corolla Hybrid is, is a more cost-effective option there. Anyways, it's up 28% on the year, 44% on the month. Camry Hybrid up 20%. Now you gotta keep in mind, they have to keep ramping up hybrid Camrys because the rumors are, what I'm hearing from my sources, is that the Camry will only be hybrid as we go to the next model. So that is gonna be interesting and in, in how they're gonna supply that sort of volume, 120, about, about 300,000 units, right? Because they sold 150,000 units so far this year. So 300,000 units of additional hybrids for the Camry. That's a problem I don't have to solve since I'm not Toyota, but good luck supplying that many hybrid batteries for the Camry as we go into uh, the next generation. In theory, if it is battery electric, it's down 40% on the year, but uh, the Camry hybrid, but it is 20% up on the month. Avalon, rest in peace, Mirai, whatever, uh, Toyota Crown. Remember, the Crown is hybrid only. They sold 6,000 hybrids, uh, Crown hybrids this year, 1,200 for the month. All right, Sienna Hybrid, up 33% on the month, down 20% on the year, essentially. But good to see the volume return on the Sienna Hybrid, which is also hybrid only. Highlander Hybrid, this volume is probably going down a little bit as they apportion these hybrid sales for the Grand Highlander and the Sienna Hybrid um, because it is the same hybrid system, same batteries, same components, same motors, etc. They've actually sold 54 Grand Highlander Hybrids. It's slow. It's really slow, like 9 to 10 seconds, 0 to 60, but 36 miles per gallon. So, I mean, that's a great trade-off for families, I would say. Most time, you're not, you don't need to be going zero to 69 seconds in daily traffic. Sometimes it's handy on the highway. So if you're driving a lot of highway, maybe you want to get the hybrid max, which gets a pretty good 27 miles per gallon on the Grand Highlander. Anyways, my voice is starting to go. Uh, this video is 40 minutes before editing at this point, so I need to wrap it up. Sequoia Hybrid, we already mentioned how well the Sequoia and the Tundra are doing so far this year. BZ4X, we already mentioned those sales before uh, RAV4 Hybrid. Okay, let's get into this. It's up on the month of June 7%, but it's down 34% on the year. I'm telling you, it's like, okay, well, the NX, right? The NX and RX use that same hybrid powertrain. The NX Hybrid's up 123% uh, on, on the month of June and up 48% on the year. RX Hybrid up 126%. So I'm telling you guys, they are saying, hey, RAV4 Hybrid, you know, you can stomach a, a loss for the first half of the year on the volume and make the commoner, the mass market customer wait. Uh, or you can you can just spend a little bit more money and get an NX or an RX hybrid with the same powertrain. There you go. That's their solution. But luckily for the RAV4 hybrid, though, it is and seeing improvements for the second half of this year. So crazy, crazy we're getting this sort of battery volume up from Toyota, but it has to happen at some point, absolutely. So maybe the tide is turning for Toyota hybrid availability, battery electric availability, and things will really turn in 2025 in terms of hybrid battery electric plug-in hybrid availability. As that plant comes on in North Carolina, they'll have four assembly lines for hybrid batteries, and that includes plug-in hybrids, and then they'll have two assembly lines for battery electric vehicles. And that will be coming out of the Kentucky plant, I'm hearing, 
potentially BZ4X could be made there if they want to bring it on over for domestic production. That way, we get the EV tax credit on it instead of importing it from Japan. Uh, also, we know that three-row crossover battery electric vehicle from Toyota will be made there. So anyways, a little off topic there, but since we're talking about electrification, I felt like bringing it up. Tundra Hybrid doing well. Venza Hybrid, <clears throat> my heart goes out to you. ES Hybrid up 1%. I saw one yesterday, 300H yesterday. Love the ES Hybrids. Fantastically smooth and efficient. Uh, down 15% on the year, though. UX, we already talked about that. Um, already mentioned NX and RX. NX plug-in hybrid, ouch, down 30% on the month and up 34% on the year. So all right, there's a round four prime, down 55% on the month, up 8% on the year. So they had a strong first half for the round four prime and the best ever first half of the round four prime, but it's not heading in the right direction because this battery pack from Panasonic is not being produced at the volume they need. And that's, I guarantee that's what's holding up the production here. I can't think it's not the engine production. So 55% down, and that is also affecting the NX hybrid as well. Same powertrain down 30% on the month of June. LS and LC hybrids, I don't know why they just haven't discontinued them for the American market. They're complete vaporware. Uh, they haven't even sold. Uh, what? Okay, so let's look at the year sales because that's how big of a joke they are in unicorns. I've only seen one LS hybrid other than a press event. I've only seen one LS hybrid on the road. Never seen an LC hybrid on the road, I don't think. Anyways, so far this year, they've sold 14 LC hybrids and 61 LS hybrids. Twin Turbo V6 is better than the 3.5 liter and the 5 liter V8 is better than the 3.5 liter hybrid setup. All right, so Land Cruiser coming back to America. We'll have an announcement, I hope, pretty soon at this point. Um, and we know it's going to be a modified version of the Lexus GX. That, there's, and that's not a bad thing. The GX is now bigger. The GX 550 will have hybrid powertrains for this Land Cruiser as well. Uh, no V8, but that's just the way of the world. A plug-in hybrid version would be cool, but don't get your hopes up on that. Look how much the RAV4 Prime and NX plug-in hybrids still are suffering with volume and the Prius Prime. Don't get me started on that. So don't get your hopes up for a plug-in hybrid on a on an F-based truck platform for Toyota. If ever, they might just go straight to offering battery electric variants of their, their body on frame vehicles. But anyways, I got to shut it down. I can't wait to see you guys sound off in the comments. If you made this far in the video, thank you for carving out, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes of your time for me today. I appreciate it. Smash the like button. Make sure you subscribe because I will reveal the Land Cruiser for you guys here on this channel. Have a great day. Take care of yourselves and peace.